Will property prices fall in the UK after Brexit? It is the question that is on the lips of buy to let investors and first time buyers up and down the country. Brexit uncertainty, changes to the tax rules, and new laws to protect tenants are shaking up the housing market like nothing seen since the 2008 recession. As investors, low prices can be both a blessing and a curse. It means that we can buy more cash flow generating freedom assets but there is more competition from other investors. And ultimately, if prices fall too low, negative equity and dried up credit lines. So where is the UK property market heading? And will the post-Brexit world, if we ever get there, still be a land of opportunity for UK property buyers? Let's check it out. Welcome to MoneyUnshackled.com. This is Andy, I'm Ben, and if you like what we say, click the like button, hit subscribe, and check out the sweet cashback offers in the description below. Let's get into it. So where is the UK property market right now? The expert advice is all over the place on this one. The Halifax have house prices surging 5.2% in the year to May, a fantastic rate of return for property investors, if true. But the industry considers Halifax to be an outlier. The more consensus view is that house prices rose between 0.6% according to Nationwide and 1.4% according to official government figures. Either way you look at it, prices have risen over the last year. The recent relative stability of the housing market is due to, in our opinion, wider economic factors outside of the Brexit debate. Employment remains high and interest rates low, keeping mortgages affordable and house prices steady. However, an economic upheaval such as a recession due to a mishandling of Brexit or by a Corbyn government keen on shaking up the economy could change all of this. RPI, measure of inflation. The RPI, measure of inflation, differs from the more commonly used CPI in that it also includes house prices. It is somewhat correlated to house prices and as a result it can be used for tracking prices in, in the wider economy. Here we see how RPI has moved over the last five years. What is interesting is the period from 2016 to 2019. Despite the uncertainty caused by the Brexit shambles in Parliament, prices across the economy have continued to rise at a traditional rate of inflation, around 2-3%, to led by strong jobs market and affordable interest rates. Brexit! 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 Coming on to Brexit, what this now represents to economists is uncertainty. Prolonged uncertainty is the death of an economy, and in our opinion, the protracted feet dragging in Parliament is causing a much more severe economic impact than either leaving or remaining in the EU would bring. No matter your position on Brexit, you should at least agree that something needs to be done quickly. There are now two realistic options left for Brexit, leaving with a deal or a no-deal Brexit. Remaining is of course possible too, but is not likely in the short term and is certainly not expected by the markets, and market prices are driven by expectation. No deal. Rightly or wrongly, the market is terrified of a no deal and the latest line from the Bank of England is that they would lower interest rates in the event of a no deal to stimulate the market, possibly even down to 0%. Under normal circumstances, we might expect lower interest rates to lead to higher house prices. As mortgages are more affordable, people have more disposable income, leading to greater demand, more people competing for the same limited housing stock. However, these are not normal circumstances, and if Brexit is delivered incompetently, then there could be an economic shock akin to the last recession. We expect this to drive house prices down as buyers pull out of the market over and above the effect of an interest rate fall. So our expectation in the event of a no deal Brexit is that house prices will hold steady at the least or fall in the short term. Leaving with a deal. The Bank of England have said if we leave with a deal they will put interest rates up. Raising interest rates would likely slow down the economy as things become more expensive, decreasing demand. At the same time, accidental landlords would drop out of the market as their mortgages become too expensive to make a profit, increasing supply. When demand is decreased and supply increased, prices fall. Other than the impact of interest rates, we think that leaving with a deal will be business as usual for the property market. Some investment cash that had been held back due to Brexit uncertainty may be released into the economy, potentially raising prices, but we think that the impact of higher interest rates will offset this. 
The reason we think that interest rates will have a greater impact than Brexit itself is because we expect the Bank of England to overcorrect the interest rates adjustment in response to Brexit as they are so terrified by it. We believe that the UK will carry on regardless of membership of the EU or lack of it. The 18 year property cycle. Another tool in our arsenal is property cycle theory. We've looked in a previous video at how the property market roughly moves in 18 year cycles. As a refresher, the four phases are recession, recovery, mini crash and boom. We are currently in an extended recovery phase, teetering on the start of the mini crash. We think that the Brexit uncertainty of the last three years has held the market in paralysis and is delaying the inevitable. Once Brexit is resolved, we expect the market to return to form and see falling prices for a couple of years during a mini crash followed by a rising prices during a boom phase akin to what happened during the 90s. Conclusion We expect property prices to hold steady or have some small growth in the short term and then to fall naturally for one to two years once the pressure valve of Brexit uncertainty has been resolved, possibly in the end of 2019. Finger in the air, looking ahead more than one year is always difficult but we would expect that the market would then enter a boom phase for several years to come. Low house prices mean that investors can buy more property, whereas price rises means that an investor makes a better investment return on their existing portfolio and even gives them the opportunity to release cash flow through equity release. High or low, a good investor can take advantage of property prices as they stand. Question of the day, do you think that property prices will fall in the UK? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing, and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackled.com. See you next time.